In the last episode, we sailed from Panama to the Galapagos in four and a half days. We were one of the lucky ones who had wind in this area. Uh, seven knots of wind, so we go higher and higher. 15, 16, 17. We are very happy with a huge A2 spinnaker uh, because in this area when there is not a lot of wind and it's mostly a little bit from the side, yeah, then it's a perfect sail. Arriving in the Galapagos was great. We've been there nine years ago, so we know how it is there, but it was so good to return there on your own keel. We never expected that we would ever do that. What we didn't film was that we had a very nice dinner in a Japanese restaurant with a, a big part of the group. It was raining and raining and raining, so we had to wait for some food, but we had a very good time in the evening. Sharks. Turtle, sea lion, woman, lights, no taxi. Refueling in the Galapagos. <laughs> we are so happy to be reunited with the group. <laughs> it's a bit sad departure here. It's grey and it's raining and there's no wind. But we are with all the other boats. Here's Enki! Thomas. Can you tell me something about the desperate strategy that we're deploying now? What happened this morning? We were passed by Akaroa 3. <laughs> it, it, we have too much green on, on our hulls. We need to clean the boat. <laughs> well, but they were just playing faster, or? Right? Yeah, maybe. Same setup? Same crossbeam? So what did we do? So we decided to go 20 degrees more downwind, put up the Jenneker and gamble that the wind would be in our favor. <laughs> now we have re overtaken the lead and we are going pretty good. <laughs> but it wasn't my choice, I want this on camera. <laughs> they made me change the sails, okay? But that's Akaroa to the left of us. Well, they're now eight miles away. Our VMG is above 10 knots. Our course is middle between the red and the orange line. 238 magnetic now. It's not that bad. Akaroa with the code zero still on is doing 227. So it's not even a big difference. And basically you want to be in the, in the dark orange, reddish colors. One of the problems we're having is that uh, our new bowsprit is one meter shorter, three feet. And we put the halyard of the Jenniker uh, all the way up, it can't go further up. The sail is still pretty low on the, uh, on the bottom, so we had to release it a little bit to prevent it from chafing. Uh, over the stanchions the whole time. As soon as we got in the deeper water and in the area where the wind could uh, turn around Isabella, the wind has been <laughs> bloody constant. We were bouncing everywhere before and uh, two or three knots of wind coming from everywhere. Uh, my prediction was that uh, it would take 
13 days, uh, but, uh, but, but we will plan on 14. So it's almost getting light. It's uh, April 1st. Uh, Akaroa is still, uh, right next to us. And there in the left hand corner is Inky. We just saw the first boat. Non Glevo boat. Non boat, yeah. We're hoping to catch up with the first group of the Glevo as well uh, later today or maybe tomorrow morning. So we're about three degrees south, three and a half. Vitya is still right next to us. They have a weather router and <laughs> he gave them a waypoint uh, and I think they they actually touched it. They exactly went 415 south, 96 west, 35 miles south of us. Uh, we are a little bit further to the west. They have incredible speeds in the last couple of hours, <laughs> above 12. We rolled in the, the Jenniker and uh, put the Solent on. So our speed is two knots less, but well, you never know. Uh, they tell us that uh, schools in the Pacific are worse than in the Atlantic. To the right of us is Chaps, and the other three boats are Chinese fishermen. When we were looking at the lights on the horizon, we thought there were well thousands of them, but uh, there are three boats over here as well. 15. We had a couple of very, very fast days with the downwind Jenniker on. Uh, I think we had averages of uh, more than 11. But to be honest, VTL was a lot faster. They had more than 12 for several days. But I have to admit, on days like that, it is way more difficult to sleep. There are so many noises. Uh, the water is making a lot of noise. And uh, the surfing, you can hear that and you can feel that. The acceleration and deceleration of the boat. It's difficult to have a good deep sleep. Today is Sunday, Sunday evening, sun is almost going down and we still have almost 2300 miles to go. Today is a very fast day, average speed until now is 11 knots, around 265 miles, 24 hours. That will be our new record. South of us, Vitya is even going faster. Today is Monday, just over four days, about 1000 miles. We're a little bit tired and there were these dark clouds building up without showing on the radar. Uh, so we took down the Jenniker before something similar happens to us as what happened to Vitya where it came down and was lost. Gives us a chance to have a good sleep. Tomorrow we'll get our friend back up. So we had two days in a row of 11 knots average. Tonight that will be one or two knots less than. We're still pretty well on schedule to be on the other side in 13 days.
You actually can't miss the Chinese fishermen. They have so many lights on in their boat, so especially in the night, it's very easy to avoid them. Good decision, a change for the Solent last night at sunset. The winds have been around 20 knots of parent all night. Getting a light again on the fifth morning at sea. Today is Tuesday. There seem to be some showers in front of us. And crazy flavor has to be there as well. About 15 miles straight ahead. After a night of rest without the uh, Jenneker on, down in Jenneker. Uh, we are now preparing the Goat Zero because it's still a little bit too much wind and too high up for the Jenneker and we want to have some more speed. So this is a good in-between solution. Sorry guys, my fault. Never a dull moment. We also found out that the Cosero still fits from the bottom to the top, but because the bowsprit is one meter shorter than the other one, the Cosero is a little bit too long. We can't pull the sheet very much, so the sail stays too round, so we can't go really upwind anymore with the sail. But it's still a beautiful sail, and because we are going downwind most of the time, it is nice to have that sail in between the Solent and the downwind Jenner. Well, that is surely a shower, even uh, though it doesn't appear on the radar. The wind was back at 15 knots for a while, but it's getting uh, more and more to where it was before. 18, 19 uh, knots, so we're ready to roll in the Kojiro. The ball and the major league, the king composing. So today and tomorrow is not a lot of wind, 14, 15, 13 knots. So just as the sun came up, Mike and I started to put up the asymmetrical spinnaker, the A2. The length of this trip was mentioned as uh, 3,028 miles, so in 5 miles we will be halfway. We're also close to Vitya again in the meantime, <laughs> so we sailed 1,500 miles and uh, 
and we're still uh, about 10 miles away from each other. The party is not so crowded. Mariko went to sleep and uh, I didn't wake up Thomas. But uh, we're gonna be halfway in uh, just a couple of seconds. 1514 to go. In exactly six and a half days as we moved the clock for one hour. Sunrise on the 7th of April. When we try to go too deep with the spinnaker and there's not a lot of wind, it's not very stable and it falls in. When there's a lot of wind, then we can go like 155 or 160 degrees downwind, but we have to steer up when the apparent wind drops. It's gonna be close whether we will be within 13 days because the wind is turning in the wrong direction and oh, oh I did return in the last couple of seconds. <laughs> Look at that. Supposed to get less but uh, it's going to be 13 days and, uh, and, and a little bit that's my prediction now. Oh you're staring and reading at the same time. Yes. <laughs> Already six hours. It's his birthday. And we're at 1000, it's an amazing day today. April 9th in the morning, 5.30. Mm -hmm. So Marijke shows her qualities in the kitchen today. Thank you so much. <laughs> Original Dutch apple cake. It is very clear on this image is what we feel normally, like being completely alone on this huge and huge ocean. They might make an in-between <laughs> stop or anchoring at Hivao. <laughs> we want to see the mountains uh, 
on the horizon when we arrive at least. Actually, we have two chances of doing that. Uh, let's let's uh, let's wait and see how this actually develops. We can, of course, uh, adjust our speed uh, and the approach of the Marquesas as well. That's another option. So we are now uh, rolling back out to Zanake because we lost uh, one of the lads in the sail. And, uh, it's gonna keep sailing, I guess. It's downwind, so it shouldn't be that bad for the big sail. We always have problems rolling the Jennaker in and out for some reason. Trying to fix it now. We're rolling in and out. In out pretty much works. Day 10 or April 10th in the morning. We're between 20 and 30 degrees, of course. I'm gonna roll in uh, Jenica now and replace it for the A2 and then try to go deeper. after a couple of days at sea you start to have a sort of a rhythm in your life the sleeping goes a little bit better you can also sleep during the day sometimes to catch up a little bit and you're developing some sort of routine like uh, doing some cooking playing the guitar mark and thomas do play some chess reading books watching netflix actually we are not bored during a trip like this you're also constantly working on the sales trying to improve your uh, strategy. Mark is always going for speed and VMG and I'm always trying to go as straight as possible to uh, the waypoint. But we decided to keep the speed in the boat even when we were off course. We decided not to make a jibe and go over the other bow and just wait and see what would happen if we were closer to the Marquesas. You never know what the wind is going to do in the last couple of days. You don't know how long your leg will be to the north. We always have the possibility for the last couple of days to use the symmetrical spinnaker, but then we need a little bit more wind. This morning we were asleep, Thomas and I, and the captain just uh, sailed through a squall. <laughs> it did help to get some speed because the wind is back at 10 knots and we have another one on our path we we're trying to go higher up to avoid it today only 8.3 would have been really happy uh, with that with the lagoon that would be our normal max speed this is the lowest uh, average we had so far Kind of a very broad, uh, unescapable uh, thingy. We shall see if the, if the only true sailor on board says it's okay, it will be okay. <laughs> we had 19 knots before the wind. This morning the max wind out of the showers was 90-20 uh, knots, so it's not a lot. But you never know, that's what makes it kind of uncertain. <laughs> that's what makes uh, Thomas look like this and Marijke look like that. She's not nervous. Or at least she doesn't look nervous, or? No. So it's Monday evening, the 11th, so on the 11th day, the ocean. 
250 miles to go to uh, Hivao, 80 miles from uh, Nuka Hiva. All of a sudden we had a squall coming over. Didn't expect it at all. Went up to 26 knots. Uh, the parent went up to 17, which is much, way too much. 12 should be the max, but uh, it's back to 13 now. Lucky to have Thomas aboard because he's awake in, in, in below a second. I think two seconds, and he is 100% of his capability right away, as you can see. We had it down in a, in a zip, it was not a problem at all. But now nothing's happening, it's only 15 knots. The next call, that's, <laughs> this stays at exactly the same distance. Well, we, were, we were used on the Atlantic that uh, they would move at 30 miles an hour, between 25 and 30. So, no way that they would just sit there and uh, and go at the same speed. So during the night, after the second squall, we decided to leave the A2 spinnaker in the sail locker and switch to the symmetrical spinnaker. But the wind in between the squalls is actually not strong enough to give us a decent speed. You get really used to the squall, so even this, you just let it go, 24 knots. I'm not impressed easily by the squalls anymore. Uh, they're not that heavy, but uh, well, you, you never know. Well, it's 24, 25 knots, and we're actually looking at them and trying to get close to them as, 
without the squall there is no wind at all so we're just floating a bit and uh, within the squall uh, we have decent speeds let's see oh, 12 knots and now it even says that we'll be able to get there today today is april the 13th so it's the 13th day on the ocean we're still not entirely sure because the speeds are so different all the time still not entirely sure whether just to go for it and anchor there in the dark or or slow down even further and uh, wait until uh, sunrise tomorrow morning kind of funny but the squalls are preventing us to see the land all the time it's less than 60 miles uh, it's just over 20 miles for the first island Planto! Zie je dat gewoon? Hier? Ja. Ga je ietsje naar rechts, zie je uit het water omhoog een donkere streep komen. Ja, ik zie hem daar, maar dan heb ik denk ik hier wel ogen gezien. So the Marquesas was one of the destinations in our trip that was on my bucket list, on a very high level. I think that's the entrance. What? What? Ah. What? Oh, that? <laughs> it's a pity that we couldn't arrive there in light. It was be very impressive to see the mountains rising up from the border after 13 and a half days at sea. But I'm sure in the next couple of weeks when we are going to cruise the islands we will see that a lot. Proost Michel. Ja, ik heb dit er niet op, dus is het hier bij.